Hello, wonderful people. Thank you for joining us again. It's lovely to have you. You're watching Wild Moments brought to you by explore.org. And it's me, Trishala, again. Yes, you're stuck with me just for a little bit longer. But I have lovely Lauren with me today. Hi, Trishala. Hi, everyone. It's so lovely to be here again talking all things bush. Yes, it's also really nice for Lauren and I to be doing bush stuff together again. I haven't seen Lauren for a little bit, uh, nevertheless, in the bush. So we're very, very excited. So remember, it's live and interactive. So you can send us your questions, give us your comments, whatever you like. We're here to have fun. So let's get right into it. So firstly, we're going to be discussing, as you know, with Wild Moments, the best sightings that we've had on the cams for the last week or so and there have mm. been some exciting sightings so we're going to start off with a very rare sighting and we'll discuss it in a bit too oh i love it when we see those eyes i just realized what that was <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys, this is amazing. A it's brown, a brown if you look at that. I'm sure that must be the first time it's been caught on a cam there in Baluli, I think it was. But that's amazing because they're very, very rare. I haven't had the pleasure of seeing one. Like many oh, things we've seen on these cams. <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> last week I was with Jamie and we had a sighting of an aardvark and um, it was an aardvark and something else that I also didn't see. Oh, it was a serval. Was it a serval? Yeah, things that I, I was just like, oh, I've never seen them pounds before. I've never seen the aardvark before and now I've not seen a brown hyena, but you have. I have, but it wasn't easy. It was not easy. I went all the way down to Swalu. Well, I did go to Swalu to see Davi. But other than that, I really <laughs> wanted to see a brown hyena. And Dylan, I'm sure some of you will mm. remember Dylan from Swalu, took us on huge missions just to see a brown hyena. We sat at heights. Our bottoms were wet and soggy, sitting on the ground, and I didn't see one. And then I went to Marataba for Safari Guide of the Year, and we went to a brown hyena den, and we tracked them, and we waited, and again, I didn't see one. So they became my nemesis animal, but I got really lucky at um, Madikwe at Christmas, and actually this one was incredibly habituated. I think they have the potential to be quite habituated, like the spotty hyenas, if they yes. just get that chance. And this one just walked right up to our vehicle, almost as if to say, hey. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Oh, amazing. Maybe they'll become my nemesis too. Yeah, but you need I, to not think gotta, about it, and then it won't happen. Exactly, it won't become exactly. that. And you and you have to be in the right in the right place at the right time, essentially. Oh, we have a whole lot of hellos, Lauren. We have Jan hello, Paula hello. says, "Yay, Trish and Lauren, hi from Arizona. Hi, Jan. Rolling trouble. You say woohoo, OMG. It's the ladies. It is the ladies. It and is the ladies. <laughs> and OMG twenty three. Good day, lovely ladies. Well, a good day to you too. Hello from Tammy as well. Hello from Suki. Hi from Florida. And that's from Pounds. And Andy saying good afternoon, Trish and Lauren. Hi, everyone. We're oh, very, good very afternoon. <laughs> Kirst, who is also part of this um, girl trio going on. Uh, can we see the brown hyena clip just one more time? It's really short, but I think it's important for us just to chat about what why it's it's so rare to see brown hyenas i think if we have to keep them, we look again that will be really helpful i love the way you just all of a sudden realize what it is yeah <laughs> and i love how the focus is this thickney until you realize that the brown hyena is walking <laughs> behind it <laughs> So there's a brown hyenas are only really exist in southern Africa. So unlike a spotted hyena, which um, exists further up as well. And they have a, a much smaller population. So uh, Lauren's going to have to help me. Spotted hyenas, their population is probably in like the 40,000s. Um, yes. I would say, yeah. Uh, brown yes. hyenas, more like 10,000s. 
of yes and the competition between the two so when they are both found in the one area or in the same reserve and the same habitat the competition between the two is too strong the browns can't compete with the spotties of course the spotties are they rule it all so you'll often yeah. find that where there <laughs> they really do um where there are areas with lots of spotted hyenas the brown hyenas just they just can't take it there's too much pressure on their populations yeah and and that's why it's so incredible that we get to see i mean like i said to you i haven't seen one lauren went through so much to try and see one and here we are really lucky to be able to see it on the camp so that's that's amazing and one rolling trouble, add... you, also, you also say just amazing and by the way you both look amazing oh thank you brown hyena standard oh, amazing thank you. <laughs> <I hope so. laughs> Oh, rolling trouble. You said, oh my God, I'm dying to hear your comments on Hosanna. Sorry, not a cam thing. It is not a cam thing. No, it's not, but it certainly deserves attention. So thanks for asking rolling trouble because I, I wouldn't have thought to bring it up um, on my own. And that's because it's taking me a substantial amount of time for it to sink in and for me to deal with it on my own. But uh, it's devastating. I can tell you that much and I, I can only speak for myself really but we spent like Lauren and I when we started in the bush together we had not we had not spent time with leopards before and Hosanna offered us the opportunity to get to know leopards in such an intimate level um, and it's something that we could I could never thank him. There's nothing I could say. There's nothing I could do. No posts that I'd be able to do that would be able to um, to say all the things that exist within me, all the appreciation that I have for him. And I'm really, really, his death um, made me obviously very sad, but it it made me, it prompted me to think that I need to find a solution and I need to make sure that anti-poaching and uh, anti-poaching shouldn't have to make a decision between their own lives and the lives of the animals that they protect. And we need to relook at our model of conservation um, in order to do better. And that's the legacy I would like to, I would like to believe that is left at least for me is that I need to do better and I need to be very appreciative of the time I get to spend with any of the leopards. I agree yeah. with you, Trish. And, you know, I remember speaking about um, Hukumuri. I remember being the presenter that had to sort of announce that death to the world. And that was hard enough. I haven't spoken out about Hosanna yet, just like you, Trishala. It's not so easy to articulate and to sort of get your head around it. but. One thing I will say is as awful as it is and as heartbroken as I am, like Trishala mentioned, Hosanna was my first love in the bush, literally my first love. And you never forget your first love. His death highlights a huge issue. And it's a huge issue across the board, especially in Africa. I wouldn't really sort of apply that to Scotland or the likes, but in Africa, across the board in Africa, there's a massive issue with human wildlife conflict. And I think there are no wild species left in the world right now where humans haven't touched. I mean, you see these BBC documentaries and they're great and they're beautiful. Oh, Planet Earth, David Attenborough, amazing. But are they realistic? Not really, because they're showing you this pristine environment that's not real. Humans are everywhere we're in the north pole the south pole the rainforest the ocean there's very few places we haven't touched and i think that the more humans are expanding the more we are entering into wild spaces and i think although i am heartbroken i agree with trishala that it, it's a conversation that needs to be had not only on a national level but maybe even on a sort of international level and it really highlights an ongoing problem and i think we have to take that tiny little piece of positivity and like Trishala said, find a solution. We can't ignore it. There's no point in getting emotional about it. Well, of course you can keep your emotions inside, but it's now time to find a solution. I completely agree with you yeah. as heartbroken as I and, am. And 
also this is just one animal and we only know about it because of who he is so yeah. it, we would be kidding ourselves if it doesn't happen um fairly regularly that's just my mm -hmm. opinion um and we don't know about those things yeah so we need to, uh, we need to be able to find solutions instead of pointing but fingers like, and blaming yes yeah but i would like to end the conversation on hosanna for now with a memory that is my favorite of his um only because it only existed for him and i and that's such a special thing because um a lot of the time when we're out with leopards the memory is shared with uh, a guest on other vehicles or if you and i are on the same vehicle or without cam up or or with everyone else that's watching um but i went to read a book what an innocent way to start a story i went to read a book <laughs> up on this platform thing that we had near camp I know and i was just so, so nonchalant holding my book like a good girl and the stairs were these very rickety wooden stairs. Um, and I just took the first step and I'm not looking down, you know, because you don't, you, I mean, sometimes you do, but I wasn't looking down. And I took this first step and this big thing just moved beneath my foot. <laughs> and it was Hasana curled up in a ball underneath the stairs. And he bolted when I took, when I stepped on that on that stair um, that he was sitting under. <laughs> and I remember getting so excited, but nobody was around. <laughs> so I, and nobody believed you. <laughs> Actually, I was so I went to instead of reading the book, I went to um, to James, and I was like, "You won't believe what happened." And then he just kind of shrugged it off and he said, "Hassan is always around camp, but you should put that down as one of your big five on foot while we're at it." <laughs> of course he said that. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I don't even know if I could pick out my favorite memory. Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, oh, there have been so, so many. Okay, we've got some comments. Rolling Trouble, you saying that anti-poaching is key. Um, it certainly is key. There's just, there's, there's many more fundamental problems that, um, you know that's why anti-poaching exists and there's all these um yeah there's a lot there's a lot to chat about but i i think we uh we should Very be complex. able to do it um uh, suki suki you said there's a very interesting piece on facebook by john vati um on the hosanna story and alternative view yes i did read it um and so john vati spoke about habituation and our uh, our role in in habituating animals and and particularly Hosanna and how that could have affected his response, anti poaching's response, not knowing who he is. Um, but but that's all. Those are all our opinions, um, and and unfortunately, we can't draw solutions from them. But it is a really really interesting um, interesting view and also he, he writes very well i must say because i when he was when the john varty's writing when he was saying that story it was very much like a story you know it pulls you in um and it's nice that people are saying these things and getting their opinions out so that we can all learn and and challenge each other in this way yeah i i read that article Ooh. too and i think it also is just important i think we forget myself included from all the time in the bush and even the ocean actually that they are wild animals habituation is a tricky one it's a bit of a spectrum just like anthropomorphism but really they are wild animals and i think maybe we need to stop sort of saying habituated 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 all the time i think that word can sometimes lead to problems down the line yeah, especially since it it also means different things to different people a lot of the yeah. time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but lots of lots of interesting it see, this is this is the great thing, is that something like this happens and we all get to discuss it and it becomes relevant again. Whereas before human wildlife conflict was was pretty much spoken about in terms of basically humans and elephants in Africa. 
that was the big, that was big the biggest human wildlife conflict. Yeah. Now we're talking about human wildlife conflict with leopards and other animals, and it just brings Lions. up a discussion, and that's really important. Yeah. Okay, but we're gonna. There's so much to say, but we're gonna move on and look at some of the other um, amazing moments that we've had on these cams. Um, and speaking of our lovely Hosanna, we're going to see another spotted kitty. Beautiful, hey Lauren. We haven't oh, seen a leopard in a while. It's been a long time. So I'm going to use one of my South Africanisms here. Yo. Whoa, that's a billion and a half. And that's that is, big there is a tight bill. So from what I understand, um, so this is Cat Eye Pan and Baluli. And from what I understand, we don't know this leopard. So it's not one that we've seen before on the cam. It's obviously a female. Um, you can tell if you look under the tail. <laughs> <laughs> no golden orbs. <laughs> no golden orbs. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, she's beautiful. Uh, I, this left side of her mouth seems like she's got a bit mm. of like an old. That's a strange tummy, though. Yeah, it's very, uh, very in the middle. Do you know what I mean? So mm. when I'm thinking, when I think about, um, firstly, let's start by saying that it is very difficult to tell if a leopard is is pregnant or if it's just eaten a lot. Yeah, very difficult. No, it just looks very like low hanging, a little bit towards the uterus yeah. there, rather than so much the belly. The it's there. She, she looks like she's snarling, you know, with the one little one side of the mouth up like that. I like it. She looks fierce. Oh, yeah, she does. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's always I best not to speculate about pregnancy, but oh, that is a strange looking belly. I was going to say, shall we just guess, Lauren? Shall we just throw it out there? I think there's a large possibility that she might be. I think so too, which is very exciting for all of you watching the cams. So maybe you'll see cubs. Who knows? Or maybe you'll see her a couple nights from now and her belly is just normal because she's eaten a whole lot. But we'll just have to keep tabs. Eh? <laughs> we'll just have to keep tabs. Um, Kirst, I wonder if, if... No, no. It's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. I was just wondering if, it, like, you know, sometimes I don't know if you've noticed, it, Lauren. I don't know if I see it as like I'm just seeing things, but sometimes I feel they get extra hairy um, when they're pregnant, just like around extra fluffy. The... Yeah, um, but it's very difficult to see. I think in that image, I don't know if they are extra fluffy or if it's just because that area of the body which you don't normally see is starting to protrude so it's starting to make the hair yes. look different i think that's what yeah. it is possibly i i i think so too because it's like pushing out and creating more space between each hair yeah i see it i see what you're talking about oh she's beautiful yeah. i miss leopards <laughs> oh i know <laughs> i know they're, they're just, they're beautiful to look at, beautiful, and to watch and observe for their behavior as well. Well, that was a really interesting moment because now you get to follow the story. That's the best thing about following animals, because you get to get to know them a little bit better. But we're going to move on to, oh, gosh, we're running out of time very quickly. <laughs> oh. We're going to move on. To our, to our next clip, which uh, which is a little bit of fun. Am I allowed to say that I miss Ellie's too? <laughs> no. This is a younger. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's okay, I did not expect that. <laughs> I 
I think the elephant didn't expect that either. Wow. I don't know if the Zumi even expected that, whoever's controlling that <laughs> camera. It just shows you the stuff we miss. Exactly, that's an excellent point. I always find it interesting when um, predators are around elephants because they know they don't stand it don't stand a chance but um doesn't stop them from being irritating to the elephant oh. Oh. Wow. you guys have been told <laughs> oh, they're not bothered. Look at them. It's now time to groom. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, oh no, we were just, we just happened to be here, you know, giving each other some affection. We don't know where you elephants came from. That's a stunning shot. Oh, that was a little unexpected too. <laughs> the lions know where they stand when it comes to elephants. They do. They'll try, but they do. Absolutely. I think they'll pay dearly if they make a mistake um, while trying their luck, you know. Mm. One, one um, elephant foot on your body and you're gonna game over mm. i really that's didn't expect that i thought we were yeah i thought we were just watching some ellies oh here you go see eyes yeah <sighs> and elephants can be relentless if they are irritated with you or, mm. you know, with the animal, they will really the put in a lot of effort. Out of there. Whoa! Backups come. Yeah, lions, it's time to just go. <laughs> Cut all the dust. Yeah. The elephants can stay, um, I wouldn't say mad or upset, but that kind of emotion. Um, they can stay that way for a while, even if the scent of the predator is still in the air. They'll you know, still vocalize. Me that for such a big i mean the largest animal literally is so reactive to sometimes the smallest of things they're very emotional very sometimes overreactive and yet they are the they're the biggest there are it just amazes me sometimes and, and i'm sure you've seen like elephants chasing birds and stuff like that getting irritated yes. at birds it does happen very emotional no one else can be here <laughs> Shreya, Shreya says the sounds are incredible. They really are. And that's Shreya, just through the camera. I haven't heard your name in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear from you. We're, we get to hear some, some names that we're familiar with here, which I love as well. Um, but, and Lauren can attest to this too. So Shreya, when, the, when you're there, I'm sure you might have also experienced it in the bush. And you hear, you hear elephants vocalizing like this. You can feel it, the vibration. Amazing. Yeah. It can be scary <laughs> sometimes too. Yes, definitely. Kathy says, well, there's animal-animal conflict too. <laughs> there certainly is. <laughs> Not just human-animal conflict. There's human-human conflict too. And there's definitely animal-animal conflict. <laughs> Luckily, we don't really need to worry ourselves with animal-animal conflict too much. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, Freda, Freda says, can elephants kill lions? Certainly. Um, each animal will make sure that they are not injured. Um, when there is confrontation in the bush, it's usually because there is little to no other option because both animals know the risk that they're, that they're going to be engaging with if they touch each other or whatever. So you'll often see fights where it looks like they want to fight, but they're not touching. That happens quite a bit. So an elephant can kill a lion, but a lion would be taking a huge risk to get close enough um, for that to, to be a, a strong possibility. And Lisa, hi Lisa White, this is just for you. Now, you would like to know if I got a chance to see the croc with the impala leg. Lisa, the image that you created in my head last week is certainly not this. So but this, this is still is incredible. incredible. <laughs> this, is, this is, thank you. This is still amazing. Um, and it's even more amazing because this was not what I was expecting. But it's a croc with, with some impala legs in it, Mark. I wonder if it stole it, scavenged it, ambushed it, hunted it. I wonder if it's a whole impala. That's also a good question. <laughs> It's a very happy crocodile, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. And there's something about his like swimming, cruising uh, style that also says I'm a pretty happy croc. Yeah, I'm a happy, happy croc. <laughs> Never smile at a crocodile. <laughs> so Lisa, I had imagined that it was a crocodile on its back because you didn't mention Impala last week. So I thought the crocodile's legs were in its mouth and that it was on its back with like a baby with leg with its feet in its mouth so that's what i was expecting lisa so i'm gonna blame you for my disappointment though fractional it was not what i was expecting <laughs> but uh, thank you because if you hadn't brought it up then we wouldn't have seen it this uh this afternoon and instead i would have seen it on my own because Kirst would have sent it to me uh so thank you lisa that was an incredible moment <laughs> and then finally we have another Another fun little clip to just end off with because we've only got a few minutes left. Beefalo. Some beefies. They look so relaxed. You know, it took me a while to actually appreciate spending time with these animals. It wasn't yeah. straight away. Oh, what's that in the background? <laughs> Is that a porcupine? Oh, Christ, are we able to go back? That's a porcupine in the background. There, there, there. I see it. Oh, you see it. Okay, wait. Really there's a whole other thing there. So on the other side of the... Okay, we'll go back and have a look there just now, Lauren. Yeah, Lauren, you're right. So just in the tree on the other side of the water, there's a porcupine. Oh! That's amazing. You can see its eyes. Oh, Ananelli. Okay, too much is happening here. Guys, too much. <laughs> this seems like a slightly more even <laughs> um, matching than the, than the elephant and the lion. The buffalo do not look bothered at all. No. <laughs> that was like a little kick. What a cool sight time. The porcupine, elephant and buffalo. Oh, this is great. But she's so right, Lauren, like these buffalo do not care at all. <laughs> Almost as if they were going to leave anyway. So elephant just helped them along. Sometimes I think the elephants want to start something. They're bored and they want to start some sort of <laughs> <Yeah>. fight. <laughs> Especially uh, young bulls. You know, 
anything to uh, to occupy themselves because I'm sure they feel quite frustrated with all the hormones coursing through them. We have uh, one last question before we say goodbye, and that's from Cat. Cat would like to know, hi Cat, firstly, would buffalo ever fight back or do elephants always win? Hmm. Hi Cat. I think they would fight back. Yeah, I mean, like I said bef before, they don't really fight because they know that they're going to get injured, either of them. So you get interactions like that where it's probably like emotionally charged, but watching it from afar, it just looks uh, much Entertainment. quieter than that. <laughs> um so we wouldn't be able to say one would win or one one wouldn't um because they I, i've never actually seen an elephant and a buffalo actually fighting coming to blows have you Lauren? no 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 but i think a buffalo would absolutely you know stand its ground and right. sort yeah. of you know make hey stop this i think it absolutely would do that yeah and i think if if any animal would with an elephant it's probably going to be rhinos and buffalo the other ones would move away quicker. I've seen rhino well, that was... come to blows. Oh, have you? I have. It Medique, yes. They both challenged and charged and yeah, it didn't come to anything, but they both gave it a really good go. Oh, there you go. So rhinos will definitely fight back. Um but and cat, if we ever see a buffalo and an elephant really having a go at each other, um, we'll we'll let you know. We will. <laughs> but thank you guys for uh, yet another wonderful wild moments uh, that we got to spend with you and go through the African bush together. And we had some really lovely discussions and obviously some wonderful clips and a surprise clip of a porcupine as well, <laughs> which was an excellent <laughs> spot. Excellent. Uh, so thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll see you again, or I'll see you again next week, and Lauren might see you again over time Whenever. as well. Yeah, when thank you, everyone. Bye.